All right. Good morning, everybody. I am so excited to be with you all today. Um, my name is Heather from With Love DC, and this is our Practice With Love pop-up yoga sponsored by the United States Botanic Garden. So we are so excited that even in spite of everything and all of us needing to be at home, um, we still get to all practice together. So I'm just so excited to practice with you all today. Um, I'm gonna do just like a very mini um, intro meditation and then I'm gonna turn it over to Erin and she is going to be leading our practice today. So everybody find a comfortable seat and just close your eyes for a few breaths. Maybe if it feels right, you'll put one hand on your heart and then just start to notice the breath moving in and out of the body. Offer yourself so much gratitude for just taking the time and the space to be with yourself today, to move and to stretch and to listen into your body for a whole 60 minutes. Together there, we'll just take three full inhales and exhales. So that just means letting the in-breath and the out-breath be a little bit longer than what felt natural. Feeling the lungs just stretch a little bit and enjoying the feeling of that stretch. And for the past few weeks together as a group, we've been letting our minds focus on what we are feeling grateful for. And today I'll invite you to let your mind rest on some act of loving kindness that you have witnessed. Maybe it was today or this week or sometime in the past month, just whatever comes to your mind with the words act of loving kindness. And maybe just thinking about that act of loving kindness brings a little bit of a lift to the corners of your lips. Maybe it brings a little bit of a lift to your heart. And before we start to move, maybe if you feel so called to move over to your chat box and just share with everyone this act of loving kindness that you have experienced. And I won't try to read them all out loud, but maybe before the end of class, you can go back and read what everyone wanted to share. So if you are feeling so called, maybe you just type into the chat box an act of loving kindness that you have witnessed today or this week or this past month. And if you don't feel like doing that, you can just sit for another few breaths, enjoying this feeling of the breeze, maybe coming through your window, the birds singing to you. Beautiful. Thank you for everyone who has shared. And if you're still sharing, that's beautiful. We'll read them at the end of class. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Erin and let her introduce herself. Thank you so much, Heather. My name is Erin San and I own Eat Yoga Drink. I'm wearing it probably, yep. Um, I teach yoga in non-traditional spaces all over the DMV area. And for the past seven weeks, I've been teaching in my basement studio, San Salutations keeping our community connected through mindful movement and breath. So if you're interested in doing any daily practice, if you enjoyed today's practice and want to practice daily with us, you can find me on eatyogadrink.com every morning at 9 a.m. It's live, synchronous, and you really feel that sense of community connectivity. Um, also want to let you know that um, all of my classes, if you can't make them live, are available on my Eat Yoga Drink YouTube channel. So I would love to see you. And I just, it's such an honor to see so many familiar faces returning to practice with me and us. I thank you so much. And for those of you who are new to the practice or new to practicing with me, um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to, to guide you today. But truly remember that you are your own teacher. I'm just here to hold space for you. I'm here to say some words to inspire you, perhaps to get in certain shapes. But you need to realize that you are your best instructor by letting the wisdom of your heart and the intuition of your mind guide you in a practice that feels right for you. So if I'm cueing something that doesn't feel comfortable for you in your body today, feel free to not do it. Do whatever you need to do. Um, if I'm cueing something and you want to amplify it, please take it in that direction. Um, but just notice 
if there is resistance to a shape, is it because of uh, you're protecting yourself physically or are you protecting your ego? And there's a difference. So just notice if you can invite the energy of yes into your practice today, welcoming a blank mind, a beginner's mind, because in a beginner's mind, it's incredibly fertile and so much can grow. And just allow this practice to really serve you best. So you're already rooted. Heather did such a beautiful job of, of getting you centered and arriving in this moment. And because we can't practice together at the U.S. Botanic Garden, I will invite you to bring the spirit of the garden onto your mat and into your body. And I share with you some words by Zen master and spiritual leader Thich Nhat Hanh, who says that we are all gardeners. Our mind is a fertile swath of land into which we plant many seeds. Sankalpa is like a seed. If you're not familiar with the concept of sankalpa, it is like a mind seed. It's an intu it's a, um, intention that we plant. We have both wholesome and unwholesome seeds, and we choose which seeds we want to water and nourish, fostering growth and abundance in a way that serves us. But if we water the seeds of anxiety and fear, meaning we stay trapped in these thought habits and we keep entertaining the fear, then anxiety and fear will grow. But if we choose to water the seeds of hope and optimism, it is hope and optimism that will flourish. Water the seeds of love and compassion and you will be filled with love and compassion. You get to choose. It all begins with you. So I invite you to come on to your mat in a table position. Before we get settled into our seed position, I just invite you to move a little bit. So guided by intuition, rather than thinking or choreographing what you're gonna do right now, just let the body find some free movement. Whatever feels good to you, maybe getting out of that linear plane and moving laterally, exploring the range of motion into the joint, Maybe invite a little articulation into the spine. This is a really nice way to begin the practice before centering because it gives you an opportunity to take an inventory of how the body's feeling. And that gives you the wisdom to know what you may need to modify today so that you can protect your physical body. Take two more breaths here, just moving freely, inviting any movement into the body. And then begin to retract your hips back to your heels. Find a child's pose. Root down through your Ajna Chakra, that third eye center, the space between your eyebrows. And that is where we hold the energy of wisdom and insight, and that it will be your guide. So just ignite it by placing pressure right on the Ajna, maybe moving the head a little bit from side to side. And settling into stillness right in center in your balasana, your child's pose. This luscious imitation to ground down into the earth, to return home. Know that this shape welcomes you anytime during the practice when you need to rest or reset your breath or reconnect with your intention. And I want you to bring to mind a garden. Imagine your mat is that fertile swath of land. And begin to embody in your own physical structure the identity of a seed. I'm going to read you a poem. It's called Garden of Your Mind. What are you growing in the garden of your mind? What do you water, nourish, and feed? Do you plant seeds of forgiveness, <clears throat> of love? Or do you fertilize weeds of anger, resentment, and fear? What are you growing in the garden of your heart? Do you allow sunshine to reach dark pain in the corners of your heart? Or do you allow fear, tears to wash it clean? <clears throat> 
Do you put up fences to keep out the feelings? Get on your knees, grow your own food, and decide what it is you want in your soil. Know that you are cultivating what you are growing. And a lot can grow in the garden of your body if you let it seed, nourish it, allow it, and watch it grow. So these wise words are empowering, knowing that we can choose what grows in our garden. We can choose what to weed out of our garden. It is always a conscious choice. And remember that when we plant the seeds of love or forgiveness or patience, whatever it is we're planting, remember that we don't pick the fruit the same day we plant the seed. So we must be patient with the process and give it time. Just take a big breath into that and let the breath go. Just take a moment to think about what you'd like to plant during your practice today. What seeds will you nestle into your fertile land? Bend the elbows, place the palms together just behind the head. Make a dedication, a promise to yourself right here that you'll stay present during the practice, nourishing that seed with positive thinking, an open mind, a full open heart, and lots of deep breath. Let's share one of those cleansing breaths together. Take a big breath in through the nose. Let it go through the mouth. Seal the lips and begin to notice the breath flowing in and out of the body. As you inhale, you're expanding with that energy of nourishment. And as you exhale, you're releasing out into the world those positive vibes that you're holding in your mind. Inhale, feel the body expand. And exhale, invite contraction, letting it all go. Maybe you start to cultivate an ujjayi breath. If you enjoy that breath, breath practice that sets beautiful audible rhythm and warming tendencies to the body, letting the breath come in and out through the nose, washing over the whisper muscles of the throat. Release your hands down. Start to walk well beyond the right edge of the mat. Plant your left palm over the right palm and root down through that left hip as you stretch and open up through the left side body. And each breath invites a cleansing, this ritual of creating space, letting go of what no longer serves you, weeding out the thoughts that distract you making more rows for more seeds. And then walk the arms well over beyond the left edge of the mat, right palm on top of left, root down into the right hip, stretch through the right side body. Nice. On the next inhale, slowly walk the hands back to center. Come back to your table position. And we're going to extend the right leg behind us. Flex the foot, toe down, heel up. And just notice what you've invited into that leg. Hugging the muscles onto the bone, rotating, spiraling that right hip inward just a little bit. Extend through the spine here. Feel the crown of the head reach forward and the tailbone back. Take another big breath. And as you exhale, draw the right knee towards you. Step the right foot between the hands and rise up into your low lunge. And just take a moment to create a little space in the hips. A little buoyancy here as we just bounce a little bit. And then once you're ready to settle, you would like to have the knee over the ankle. We're going to sweep the arms up, interlace fingers behind the back, bring the, head, the hands to cradle the head. 
And as you inhale, lift your heart up to the sky. As you exhale, hinge at the hips, round and bow down. Maybe the elbows come to kiss one another. Inhale, lift up, open up, feel your heart energy flourishing. And exhale, bow down in reverence to this garden. Two more, think about a cat cow in your spine, extending here, flexing here. Nice, take one more big breath, big inhale, and exhale, let it all go. Release your hands to frame your right foot, shift back, find your half Hanuman, your half split. You're bowing down again, hinging right at the hips, trying to maintain a nice long spine. Big breath in, full breath out. Just give it time, allow those muscle fibers to wake up a little bit. One more big breath in, full breath out. Beautiful, shift into the right foot, keep the left hand rooted down to the earth, right arm reaches up, take your twist. If you want to invite a little bit more of a, a, a really deep stretch into your left side so as you can press into the top of the left foot and lift the left knee as you twist. Big breath in, full breath out. Beautiful. One more inhale. And then bring the hands down, bring the knees together and just take those organic movements again. Stirring up through the hips and the core. We're getting out of our heads today a little bit, just getting into the body, doing what feels right. And then come back into your table position with a nice long flat back, lower abs drawn up and in. When you're ready, extend that left leg back, flex the foot. Heel up, toe down, hip spiraling inward. Press the earth away. One more big breath. As you exhale, step the left foot between the hands. Rise up. Again, take a little movement, creating some space in the hips. And then when you're feeling settled in your low lunge, sweep the arms up. Find a weave of the fingers that feels different, right? We want to shake up our neural habits, and we want to do something different to wake up to this moment. That's our mindfulness practice. So do something that feels kind of funky, and then bring those hands behind the head. As you open up the heart on the inhale, as you exhale, bow down, rounding through the back, elbows kiss. Staying deep in the lunge. So we're just moving through the spine here. Moving with our breath. Maybe listening to your ujjayi breath. Beautiful. One more big breath in right here. And as you exhale, round the spine, release the hands down to the earth, then shift back, finding your half split. And know that if you're feeling super flexy and limber today, you don't have to stop at a half split. You can go all the way, baby. You want to slide that foot forward, create a little bit more space in the hips, stretch through the legs. This is your practice. So remember, modify when you need to and amplify when you want to. Big breath in, full breath out. But remember, we're not here to satisfy the ego today. We're here to please the body. So do what feels right. Inhale and exhale. Beautiful. Shift forward back into that left foot. Root the right hand down. Reach the left arm up for your twists. You can gaze up at the left thumb. You can power up through that right side psoas muscle by pressing into the top of the right foot. If that's too intense, release the knee down. Maybe you try it and you say, yep. Or you try it and you say, not today. Nice, one more big breath. And release the knee, bring the hand back. Knees come together. Take another child's pose, just a moment. Just check in on those seeds. Notice if any weeds have crept in. Those are the 
unpleasant thoughts that creep into our mind that try to hijack our attention, whether it's self-limiting thoughts or toxic thoughts of memories from the past, just let your garden know there's no room for it today. One more breath and release. From here, we'll shift back through table position. For table, turn your wrists so that your fingers face one another, so that the center fingers are kissing. Mwah. And then just lift the fingers, swivel on the, the heel of the hand, and root back down. And that's generally going to help measure out so that your alignment is just right for you with your shoulders stacked over your wrists. Tuck the toes under, lift the knees to hover, press your chest all the way back towards your thighs. And then hover forward into a plank pose by extending the legs. Inhale, press your chest back towards your thighs. Exhale, press forward into a high plank. Just do that a few times, igniting your core energy, waking up through the, the quadricep muscles. And on the next inhale, lift your hips high, downward facing dog. Nice. And just take note of the four corners that invite you to root into the earth here. Feel where you're connected and try to shift the weight in such a way so that it feels evenly distributed among those four corners. Breathe in. Breathe out. Ah. One more big breath and let it go. Start to walk your hands back to your feet, nice and slowly, finding a forward fold at the back of the mat. And start to bend the knees, press into the earth, rise up, all the way up, reach up, open your heart to the sky. Exhale, hinge at the hips, bow down, chest to thighs, knees with a really juicy bend. Inhale, rise up once again. Exhale, bend the knees, bow down. <sighs> Inhale, rise up, beautiful. This time, keep the legs straight. Hinge at the hips, forward fold. Halfway lift, hands to shins, a beautiful flat back, navel draws up. And exhale, let it go, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. And fold. We'll do that once more. Keep saying good morning to those hamstrings. Halfway lift and fold. Walk your hands out to a high plank. So take your time, really feel the sensation of the earth beneath your palms. Once you arrive in your high plank, lower the knees, untuck the toes, bend the elbows, lower down chaturanga. Inhale, press the earth away, baby cobra. Exhale, melt down. Inhale, baby cobra. Feel the shoulders melt away from the ears. And lower down. Spread those arms nice and wide. Come to your spider fingers. So the pads of the fingers are touching the earth. Elbows are tented. As you inhale, press the earth up. Peel the ribs away. And as you exhale, dip your right shoulder over toward the left corner of the mat. Gaze over your left shoulder. Inhale, lift back up to center. Exhale, left shoulder down to the right corner. Gaze over the right. We'll do that once more on each side, letting your breath guide you. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Beautiful. Noticing what's present here. Come back, slide your hands right back to the tops of the ribs. Draw those elbows in, take another big breath. And as you exhale, tuck the toes, press the earth away, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> Every breath helps to till and loosen the soil. When the soil of our minds and our soil of our gardens is constricted without the airflow, nothing can grow. So we remind ourselves of the importance of the breath. Big breath in, full breath out. Ah. Inhale, right heel rises, three-legged dog. So again, drive that heel straight up to the sky, no rotation in the hips, use, use the glutes. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, step the right foot between the hands. 
We're gonna pick that right arm back up for a twist and then release the hand down to frame the foot. Step forward, forward, fold. Inhale, rise up all the way up. Exhale, bow down. Halfway lift, flat back. Plant the hands, left foot steps back. So same side, low lunge. And then we're gonna come to a skandasana. So we're gonna walk over toward the left foot, shifting into the left foot, flex into the right foot. So get a really nice opening into that inner hip and inner thigh of the right side. Maybe you feel the pinky toes on that right side spiral out. Maybe you drop the left arm, lift the right arm for another twist. Maybe you can hear me over the sound of the, uh, of the weed whacker behind me. <laughs> Take a big breath in and release the hands. Walk back over, stay low, frame the right foot. Step back, high plank. From high, we lower to low plank. Open up the heart. Maybe you start inviting upward facing dog. Tops of the feet root down into the earth once again. Exhale back to downward facing dog. There's no rush. We're moving with our breath. We are moving with our intention. Fully present for ourselves as we practice today. Big breath in, full breath out. Beautiful, inhale, left heel rises, three-legged dog. Feel the engagement in that top leg. One more breath. And then step the left foot between the hands, right palm roots, left arm rises, twist. Then release the left hand, step forward, forward fold, top of the mat. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bow down. Beautiful, halfway lift, hands to shins. Plant the hand, right foot steps back once again, low lunge. And then we walk over skandasana, shifting the weight to the right side, opening up to the left side. Feel that hip spiraling outward. Maybe you take another twist here if you like to twist. Keep sinking the tailbone low, you guys are awesome. One more big breath. And hands come down, stay really low. It's a good hip stretch. Just stay low, crawling over to frame your left foot. Step back to high plank, lower down chaturanga, maybe hovering with the elbows drawn in toward the ribs. And scoop the heart up and open for your upward facing dog. Back to downward facing dog. Beautiful, breathe in, breathe out. So we're gonna take that very modified Surya A a little bit faster, not fast. We're still moving with our breath, but we're gonna do one breath in one shape. So when you're ready, right side, right heel rises. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, right arm up, low lunge, twist. Frame the foot, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, bow down. Halfway lift, flat back. Plant the hand, left foot steps back, skandasana, shifting over to the left. Then walk back over to frame the right foot. Step back to high plank, lower down chaturanga. Open your heart, downward facing dog, gorgeous. Remember, rest when you need it, jack it up when you want it. This practice is yours. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, left heel rises, three-legged dog. Step the left foot through, twist, left arm rises. Exhale, step forward, forward fold, top of the mat. Root down, rise up, flourish right here. And bow down. Halfway lift, flat back. Plant the hands, right foot steps back, skandasana. Stay low, frame the left foot. Step back, high plank, lower down chaturanga, lift through the heart, back to downward facing dog. You guys are awesome, breathe in, breathe out. Ah. Shake the head, notice if as you were moving a little faster, if there was some tension built up in the jaw because you were concentrating Notice how the body's feeling, release it. 
Ah, beautiful. On the next inhale, left heel rises, three-legged dog. As you exhale, draw right knee to right elbow, hover forward. Send that right leg back up with control. And then step the right foot between the hands and rise up into a high crescent lunge. And once again, find a little buoyancy in your lunge. You want that back leg fully engaged, pressing out through the heel. But you want to feel really nice and comfortable in the joints of the hip and the knee here. Just bounce a little bit. Nice. And then interlace fingers behind the back. Draw the fist down away from the sacrum. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and lift your heart up to the sky. Feel that abundance of gratitude and loving kindness Woo! That, that Heather helped plant at the beginning of practice. Feel it just really nourish. Feel it blooming right here. Beautiful, one more breath. From here, we're gonna shift into the right foot, coming into a bound warrior three. So if warrior three isn't your jam today, maybe you keep the toes rooted and just look to lengthen the spine. Or you begin a full lift of the left leg. Once again, spiraling the left hip inward. Toes down, heel up. Big breath in. Full breath out. Beautiful, begin to land. We're gonna release the bind and melt that left heel down, spinning open to warrior two. Inhale, flip the right palm, reverse the warrior. Exhale, back to warrior two. Inhale, straighten arms and legs. Got my back to you over here, I'll turn around. Straighten your arms and legs. Just come into a power pose for a moment. This is a time in our lives where there are a lot of expectations on us to do things different than we've ever done them before. Sometimes that can be a self-defeating process. So we want to bring some empowerment back into our body, just reclaiming our strength and our courage. Anytime you come into this shape, it's like recharging your batteries. It's like reclaiming that power and saying, I am here, I am enough, I've got this. Take a big breath in. One more big breath. And then begin to hinge at the hips, folding down, bowing down into your forward fold, wide-legged fold. If you have a headstand in your practice, you wanna safely invert that way, go for it. Otherwise, it's plenty enough just to be here hanging, just seeing the world in a different way, for inspiring a little fresh oxygen flow to the, to the brain, to wake you up and bring some mental clarity into the picture. Breathe into the spaces of the body that you're really noticing right now. Take another big breath. From here, start to walk back over to your right foot. Frame the foot, step back and go through your vinyasa flow. Hide a low plank. Open up the heart. Downward facing dog. Life is unpredictable, it's full of distractions, so we just continue to stay present with what brings us joy, the blessings of the breath, the bodily sensations, our gratitude. Take another big inhale. Let the breath go. On the inhale, left heel rises, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the left foot through, rise up, high crescent lunge. So when you're high crescent again, create some space in the hips, just bounce a little bit. And then come right into center, interlace your fingers behind your back in a different way. Draw the fist down away from the back, open your heart. Feel the love energy flourishing. Let's stay 
reload of the microphone here. Start to shift into your left foot. Coming into your bound warrior three. So again, notice if you need to keep the toe low or lift it up into your full expression. Keeping the right foot flexed, press that heel back. Take another breath. Beautiful. From here, we're gonna release the right foot back. We're gonna unwind the bind, open right up to warrior two. Take a big breath, inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, right back to warrior two. Straighten the arms through the legs, returning to your power shape. Yes, can't do this enough throughout the day. So the toes are gonna be in, or sorry, heels in, toes out. Take a big breath in. Exhale, goddess pose. Sink that tailbone nice and low. Keep the spine tall. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, draw down. Two more. Breathe in. Breath out. Last one. Inhale and exhale. Stay rooted right here. Feel that root chakra opening up. Bring the hands right to the thighs. Dip your right shoulder down towards your left knee. Gaze over the right shoulder. Feel that really beautiful stretch for the back of the right shoulder blade. One more breath. Inhale back to center. This time we're going to take the left shoulder to the right side. Beautiful, back to center. Inhale, lift up, open up. Warrior two, back to the front. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, cartwheel the hands, frame the foot. Start to make your way back through your vinyasa flow. High to low plank. Create some space in the heart. Back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more inhale. And let it go. From here, look to the front of the mat. Oh, you know what I realized we forgot? Lift your left leg high. You thought you were getting off the hook here. Bring your left knee to your left elbow. We're just doing that little oblique crunch because I forgot it. Send it back up. There we go. Now we're even. Bring the feet to the front of the mat. So maybe bend the knees, hop or float feet to hands. We're going to rise all the way up. Once you rise, bring your hands to your heart. Toe mounds touch. Sink into your Utkatasana chair pose. So you're inviting the hips, the hip flexors to really engage and draw back down towards your heels. Lengthen through the body as you draw the abs in. Take a big breath in. Sink a little deeper. Shift the weight into the right, I'm sorry, to the left foot. Cross the right over the left, and then cross the right arm under the left. So our shoulders should be nice and open right now. We're coming into our eagle bind. Another power pose to really strike up that Manipura energy right in the core. This is our inner fire. We need heat, we need warmth, we need sun for our seeds to grow. Squeeze everything into the middle. Breathe. One more big breath. From here, we're going to unwind the arms, unwind the leg, come back into a warrior three shape, and then let the hands come down to the earth standing split. Draw your knee to your nose. Maybe you hook the hands outside of the ankle. Maybe you're working on your handstand prep or practice and you want to start floating the shoulders um, below the, the hips. Take one more breath. And then start to bend the knees, bringing your right knee behind your left knee, a little curtsy. And then inhale back to standing split. Exhale, a little curtsy. Inhale, standing split. Last one, a little curtsy. Back to standing split, really firing up through glutes here. And then come back to that curtsy Follow along here, doing something a little funky, a little different. Your left hand comes to your right foot or ankle, 
and we're gonna rise up into a reverse dancer. So this really begs your attention and your presence here, thinking about all the parts. So your right foot is in your left hand, kicking the foot into the hand, open up. Nice, take one more breath. And then we're gonna come out of this just as we got into it. So start to bend the knees, right hand to the earth, step the right foot to meet the left, forward fold. Take a rag doll here. <laughs> Again, notice when you're concentrating on that shape, if you held your breath. The goal is to breathe for challenge. So just remember it's a practice. Be gentle and patient with yourself. And then slowly start to rise all the way back up. Come back into your Tadasana, your mountain pose. Yes, feel rooted. Feel where the spine is lifting. Notice the qualities of the breath and the presence of your intention. And when you're ready, back to Utkatasana chair pose. Everyone's favorite. We love it. It's fun when I do my hip hop yoga because we turn this into a massive booty shake. So keep an eye out for that one. Take a big breath in. Sink a little lower. And then press into the right foot. Start to cross left over right, eagle bind. And then bring your left under the right. Crossing at the elbows, connecting at the palms, or however it's accessible to you. Sinking low in that chair, squeezing all the energy into the midline. Fire up that energy that's helping your garden grow right here. Breathe in. Breathe out. Beautiful. Start to unwind those arms, unwind those legs. Back to your warrior three. From warrior three, bring the hands down to the earth standing split. Taking any variation here, taking a bind, floating the legs up for your handstand if that's in your practice. Take one more big breath in, full breath out. And then inhale, extend the leg, exhale, curtsy. It's a really good way to fire up those glute meads. Your hip stabilizers are so important. It's important that they're strong. So this is a really good one for it. Beautiful, one more, big breath in. Bend the knee, curtsy. Right here, right hand to the left foot. You got this. Press down, lift up. Your funky reverse dancer pose. Draw the heart forward. Feel extension, you got it. One more breath. And we're gonna come out of it the way we got into it. So bend the knees, come on back down, release the bind, forward fold, yes. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Plant your hands. This time you can hop back if you'd like, bend the knees. You can even take a crow to flow. If you're, if you're really in love with arm balancing, maybe you come into your crow pose for a moment and then shoot the legs back, landing right in your chaturanga. Open up, pull me back in downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. One more big breath. Let the breath go. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, right knee to right elbow once again. Inhale, right leg back up, three-legged dog. This time, right knee to left elbow. We're gonna extend the right leg so the outer edge comes onto the left side and peel that left arm up, fall in triangle. Press the earth away. Really feel the obliques at work here. Feel that big hip stretch on the left side. One more breath. And then lower your right hip down to the ground. Just lower it straight on down. We're gonna bring the left palm back where it was under the shoulder. And we're gonna twist to the right. So hopefully you can see that my right leg is extended. You can intensify this stretch into the IT band on the right side by sliding your foot up, 
You can make it less intense by sliding your foot down. Okay, your left leg is bent just to support your hip flexor. If you want a deeper twist, come down onto your forearms and invite the gaze to float over your right shoulder. You can come all the way down onto your belly if that feels good. Stay present for yourself as we hold the shape for a few breaths. Notice how this is helping your garden grow by squeezing out any toxins, any self-limiting beliefs, all those weeds that try to strangulate your, uh, your garden. Strangulate a word, strangle. Strangulate sounds like it should be a word. Keep breathing deeply. The breath gets constricted and twists. So we really want to be mindful of this, these full breaths. One more big breath. And then start to walk your hands back up. We're going to take a pinwheel pigeon here. So just bend both knees so that your right foot is right up along your left thigh. If you prefer a full pigeon and you know that you're ready for it right now, go ahead and take it. Otherwise, I, I love sharing this modified version because it, it's an alternative to a figure four on your back, which is what a lot of people who can't do pigeon default to. And this is a really nice way to make pigeon accessible to you. So with your pinwheel shape, take a big breath in and start to fold over the fleshy part of your thigh. So walk forward, lengthen the spine, and then melt your belly right into that fleshy fold of the thigh. Bow the head down. Maybe the ajna is caught by your fist stacking or your palm stacking so that you feel rooted. Inviting compassion and patience into this shape. Wherever you're noticing strong sensations, we breathe that love right into that space rather than inviting shame. Take two more big breaths. And start to walk back. We're gonna extend that left leg back behind us. Make our way back to a three-legged dog with the right leg high to the sky. Bend the knee, shake out through that hip. And then float into a vinyasa if you'd like. Maybe let the leg hover for a little challenge high plank to low plank, and then release the leg when you're ready for your upward facing dog, your back bend, back to downward facing dog. Nice, take a breath in, let a breath go. <sighs> Inhale, left heel rises, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to left tricep, hover forward. Inhale, back up. Exhale, left knee to right tricep, Extend the leg out to the side. Shift into the left palm. Peel the right arm up. Beautiful. Inviting length and power into your body with each breath. One more big breath. And then release your left hip down to the earth. You can bend that right knee. Bring the palms down. Gently guide yourself into this twist. Look over the left shoulder or come down onto your forearms, maybe melt your belly down to the earth. Stay patient with yourself in this twist. Keeping the mind solely focused on what's going on in the body and the way the breath travels in and out. Two more big breaths into this stretch.
And then press back up into the palms, bend your left knee, bringing the left foot to the right thigh, setting up for our pinwheel pigeon, our modified pigeon shape. But again, take full Kapatasana if that's in your practice. Do what, what is best for you right now. So we're gonna rotate the upper body, and start to walk, flattening our chest right to that fleshy part of the thigh. Melt down, again, support your ajna, that third eye space. As you notice that you're melting a little bit more in with each successive breath, maybe you flatten the palms. Being, being fully present for the surrender here. Two more breaths. And then we walk our hands back up, coming back into a three-legged dog, left leg to the sky. Take some big circles into the left hip, whatever feels good. Final vinyasa flow, maybe you take it with the leg lifted, shifting forward, stacking shoulders over wrists. Bend the elbows, hugging the ribs, chaturanga, and then lower the legs, coming into upward facing dog. Drop to the knees here, shift over to your hips, plant the feet on the earth and let the knees Drop from side to side, a little windshield wipering into the hips. I hope some of you are able to practice outside, particularly if you're in the area of DC. We're gonna be having a really incredible flyover at 11.45. The Naval Blue Angels and the Air Force Thunderbirds are gonna be putting on quite a show for us to honor our first responders. So for those of you who are first responders, know that we salute you, we're grateful for you. All right, from here, we're gonna roll onto our backs. Hug your knees in towards your chest. And just check on the time here. We're good. All right, we're gonna take an inversion on our back. So one option is a legs up the wall. Another option is a shoulder stand. There are endless options, but these are two that I'm just gonna throw out there. I'm going to stay in my waterfall shape, my legs up the wall, because I really enjoy the sense of rooting and grounding I feel from the sacrum all the way up to the back of the head. It helps to improve the flow of lymphatic fluid through our body, which is a really great immunity booster. We all need that right now. So take a moment in a shape that feels right for you to shift perspectives, to get upside down, to bring some calm to the nervous system, Quieting any stress responses, any emotional reactivity. Just give yourself a chance to be present for about 10 breaths. Take two more big breaths. If you are in shoulder stand safely, coming through plow pose, halasana, legs overhead. And then begin to roll down one vertebra at a time. We'll all meet in a happy baby shape. Knees can be wide and bent. Bind can be on the toes or the edges of the feet. Just Rock from side to side, massaging your back into the earth. Taking note of your seeds, 
what you've offered to them during the practice today, and what you can continue to offer well after the practice is through so your garden continues to grow. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Wrap your hands around your shins. Give yourself a really big hug as thanks for practicing today. What a gift you offered yourself. It certainly is a gift to us that you arrived on your mat. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, unfurl the body, coming into your final resting shape of Shavasana. When the time is ready to end, I will wake you up with another poem. So take a big breath in. Let everything go and allow yourself to simply be. This is called The Little Plant by Kate Brown. In the heart of a seed, buried deep, so deep, a dear little plant lay fast asleep. Wake, said the sunshine, and creep to the light. Wake, said the voice of the raindrops bright. The little plant heard, and it rose to see what a wonderful, outside world might be. Take a big breath in. Send that breath out. Take another breath in, harvesting your love, kindness, compassion, and gratitude right from the center of your heart. And spread it out into the world. Do that one more time. Inhale and let it all go, just spreading those seeds of love. When you're ready, start to invite some movement into your body, feeling empowered, feeling refreshed. Reach your arms overhead, press your feet away from you, and take a full body stretch. And then draw your knees in towards your chest and roll onto one side this is the position of new beginnings, and this truly is where it all begins. It begins with you, with your conscious choices, with your beautiful energy aglow, watching your seeds flourish just as you want them to. 
Slowly start to rise to a comfortable seated position. Once you arrive there, bring your hands to your heart. Pressing the palms together. I'm so grateful that you chose to practice with us this morning among all the other things you could have done. Thank you. Know that the love and the light in me honors the love and the light growing so bright, glowing so brightly in each of you and growing. Namaste. So again, thank you so much for practicing with us in my garden. And again, my name is Erin San. I own Eat Yoga Drink. So check out all the classes I have coming up, including a Cinco de Mayoga on Tuesday night. It's fully free and it's a really fun way to, to celebrate Mexico and all of the cultural um, offerings that it has brought to us. So hope to see you then. Hope to see you again. Heather, thank you so much. Thank you to the U.S. Botanic Garden for sponsoring this class. I'll, t I'll send it off to you, Heather. Thank you guys so much for joining class, Aaron. Thank you for such a beautiful flow. Someone in the um, chat section wanted to get the names and the um, authors of all of those beautiful poems. So maybe oh, sure. type those into the chat. And for those who are here at the beginning of practice, if you wanna scroll up in the chat box, you can see all the beautiful examples of loving kindness that people oh. shared. Um, oh. And yeah, I'll leave class open for a little while, but thank you guys so much for practicing. We'll see you next Saturday. And um, yeah, thank you again, Erin. And thank you everyone. You're welcome. Jill, could you please email me and I'll send you copies of them because I have them in print. Um, if you can email me, Jill, if you're listening, eatyogadrink at gmail.com. I'll, I'll put it in my, I'll put it in the notes here. Email me for poems. Yoga drink, uh, eat yoga drink at email.com. That way I can, I can share them with you. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much. It was really, truly so much fun. And hopefully you weren't too, um, you know, distracted by the weed whacking. <laughs> it was beautiful. It's all part of the practice. It's thank part you. of the practice. Exactly. If we were at the garden, we would have heard protesters. We would have heard all kinds of things. So um, thank you all for your patience and for joining. Thanks for giving me an excuse to practice out in the garden. It's been the first day when I could do this. So I appreciate you. Thanks. Oh, someone got flowers on their doorstep by a stranger. Katie, how wonderful. Oh, I love seeing all these comments. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm glad you practiced with us outside today. Thanks, Helene. You guys are truly a gift. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to close out the meeting, but there will be a recording on the U.S. Botanic Garden website. And um, I'll see you guys next Saturday. Enjoy the flyovers. Yes. Go outside in 15 minutes if you're in D.C. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, Heather. Thank you so much.